Hey everyone, it's Norm here from Test It at San Diego Comic-Con 2023. One of the big reveals at the show here at the Hasbro booth is their new HasLab. Now Chris, Jing, you guys just showed off for the first time. And it's right here, it's the ghost. It it's oh. huge, it's here. Oh my gosh, it, oh, huge, okay. That's an understatement. This <laughs> is much bigger than the Razor Crest model, for example, that you yeah, guys released a couple years Razor ago. Crest, yeah, yeah, our biggest starship that we've ever made. So wow. it's right here in person. So you get to really appreciate the scale of it. Yes. Well, the scale, the size of this has to equal the love that the fans have for this ship, Aww. which I think, you know, the fans of Rebels love. I mean, it's, it's yeah. beloved, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's awesome. a character yeah. in its own right. Yeah, which... we've got four seasons of a relationship with the ship already. Yep. And, and we're going into come. live action exactly. with Ahsoka, so oh, yeah, okay. it's only going to get more of a love affair with it. So, yeah. so talk, walk me through the development of this, because you guys have yeah. ships at all different sizes. Obviously, these are matched for certain types of figures. Right. It kind of works out that you can make something this big that can yeah. be played with. Yeah, well, and I think that's the beauty of the, the vintage collection scale. I mean, Kenner started the three and three quarter inch thing with Star Wars figures because, at least in part, they worked well with the vehicles. I mean, we continue that. It works great for us. And like moving into something like this, I mean, it's it's huge, yeah. but it still works because yeah. you're at a scale that you can manipulate a figure. You can distort things a little bit, make room, blow rooms up, mm -hmm. shrink rooms down, and play with the ship to make it work. You can so. still play with it. That's why it's so important for us to get some of the figures in there as well, because we know that the, the fans are looking for that. They're looking for the crew. They want to get, you know, Zeb in there. You know, they want to get Ezra in his bunk. Just like all of those playable features for the ship, it's great at the scale. Well, let's take a look at some of those features because yeah. the, the exterior is beautiful. I mean, even just looking at it, you have the classic Star Wars designs of all the Greeblies on the side, the kind of the, the, the prequel era, the ball turrets, yep. all that influence. Um, so it's a great silhouette. Uh, but the whole thing does open up. It does. Yes. It does. Ooh, so, panel. and the the first thing that opens up is the is the little loading ramp here. So there's so many great scenes from this, from animation where like that's a quintessential part of the story, going into it. But I mean, you mentioned the detail, the greeblies, all that. I mean, and part of that is it looks as good as it does because we worked really close with Lucasfilm, and they share. We had the three files for the ship from Ahsoka. Oh. So we had all that detail. We could we could interpret that into a toy form and, and all the moldability and draft and stuff for different panels, different directions, and work that out in this thing. Yeah. That's so, why the timing's building, right. Yeah. Building and, the ship as we were building the ship. So really working right. closely with ILM. Like you're getting on video yeah. conferences with them. You know, you're looking at references for the show and then looking at the references for this. So really pulling it all together here. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and that was, I mean, we talked about it in our panel a little earlier where it was, it was in parallel with the development of the ship for the show. I mean, so much so that this is not the first time this has been painted. We've had this painted a different paint scheme at one point. And you guys will probably see that in some other content we'll release eventually um, about process on this, but where colors were brighter and more saturated. And the, it was because they were doing that. They were having those experiments internally. Yeah. And we all evolved and worked along that path together in real yeah. time to so get actually, there. So to that point, this is not even the most final and accurate. The renders on our website is more final and more accurate than what you see on the ship. We just yeah. had to, to stop in a point of time right. to get a prototype out here for SDCC for everyone to look at. But yeah, our website's even even more accurate. So like more images and you know things to come for so that. It's a long going live collaboration. Yes. It is. A show it's that's you know in, in production or post production. Yeah. 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 And, and in a month we're gonna see it we're gonna <laughs> see it in our in our T V screen. So. Oh my gosh, okay and shuttles coming so out. Shuttles coming out so oh, we've got the we've got a little chopper, chopper here on the side yep very cool uh we've got the opening yeah. cockpit there so yep bit of figure in bit there of figure in there so Herrick can pilot that thing we've got the little fold-out landing gear on this wonderful I'm, I'm noticing and it's something i noticed when even like the racer crest which i'll call it to as an example is all the detail on the undersides right like when panels come out there's extra geometry there yeah we, that you're putting we in. like to we like to leave well, not we like to not leave panels untouched. <laughs> we like to touch every surface. I mean, they're doing it on the models. I mean, yeah. even the backsides of the blockade runner and ships from the original movies like have detail on them. Mm -hmm. So we like to make sure we're matching that sort of sentiment on the on the ship. So I'll set him over there. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll start pulling off some more panels. 
Oh, so wow. The whole back pulls off here. This is a quick look. This is still prototype, so there's still things changing, but this is that sort of thing. Like, even the underside of this panel that you're setting aside, we still have like ceiling vents and all sorts of things going on in there. Mm. So, you do that. I'm always impressed the considerations that toy designers have to make for something for manufacture because it's not just, you know, we, we've seen assets from studios which obviously aren't like 3D printable or something. The work has to be done to make them watertight and solid. Right. But you're going the extra step of making it manufacturable right. and playable. Yeah. Exactly. Which has to be durable, not just as a single entity, but durable when parts are on or off. Exactly. You have to be able to take it apart, put it back together. It's multiple an alchemy. Times. Like that. That is yeah. real engineering. Wow. Well, and then keeping in mind what what people that buy this are going to want to do with it. Yeah. And customizing it, like those sort of things, and giving opportunities for that. So, and we see here the the cockpit. And like Jing said, this is a, a moment in time. So if you look at the image on the website, the side walls of the cockpit have a lot more dimension in our final version. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we were able to to work with the factory and work on on drafting those things out, really extending those details, getting a lot more in there. I love so, how much wall detail there is. And, and even these walls. So we thought we were going to have to, to cap the walls at this height. But then yeah. as we started developing the interior with the exterior more, we saw we had room to come up. So we've actually extended the height of this section of the wall up so these doorways are all taller and even Zeb fits through the doorways now. Okay, fitting through so, the doorways, there is something magical okay. about that. Yeah. And, and I know the Razor Crest, like the cockpit, and the, like, it's yeah. a solid wall, but just from like a imagination standpoint, I remember uh -huh. like, it's like the whole dollhouse aspect. Yeah. Right. When you can have these multiple rooms back to back, it, it's the world building that it is. really yeah, happens. It feels good. It's when so you, good. It slides Looking into it down, that seat, oh. when it fits through the doorway, yeah. it gets into that bunker, yeah. And it makes every angle right. just packed, layered it of does. details. Well, and it's one of the things, I think we did it in our, in our launch video. Um, we actually took a camera shot and walked from the, the lounge hallway. area oh, through the ship in yes. 3D as if you're a character in yeah. the ship. And we also so. put Hera in different sections in different of sections, the ship yeah. because that's how we're picturing our fans to play with it. So we wanted Hera to be able to be like interacting in every single piece. Wow. And there's there's little stuff. So we like little details, like being able to fit different figures in. I mean, we're putting mm -hmm. Zeb in here, we're putting Ezra in here. Yep. So you want to make sure the pedals adjust for each character. The seat reclines a little bit. This one's an earlier version, so all the articulations so are there. But like the mm -hmm. turret articulation all there. there. Everybody has their seat. There's I this love ladder. that ladder. I love and if you, it. You can actually look up in that oh that ramp, it? and you can actually see all the way to that ladder in the back. It makes so lighting. I can, I can take this so here, much fun, and I can. Oh my gosh! Wiggle her carefully. down. Yeah, she's a prototype, so I can yeah, wiggle her down in there. But yeah. then you can look up that ramp and see her yeah. speed down in the thing. So all those, all those sort of fun details in here. We've got the the two different crew quarters. So we've got a single bed for room captain, that's for yeah. the captain's quarters, and we've got the double bunks over here. Looking in the back, we've got a gaming table. We've got yeah, your chair, chess set, yeah, oh, little stools. Harris custom little seat there. All this. So this panel back here, if you remember right, that this rear panel when it, it's on the ship, this is another one of those areas of detail. So when this is on, mm -hmm. that whole area is hidden. So that's not something that that ILM has to define. Mm. But we work to go in and add all that that greebly detail underneath, so that when you remove that, you see some engine bulkhead kind of stuff going on there. And I'm looking at you know the paint up of this. Uh, you you're telling me this is closer, might be even be the paint master uh -huh. that you're gonna send, but how do you choose between your metallics or where to focus some of the weather? Really good reference. <laughs> yes. Hey, Lucas found collaboration. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, the... we go back and forth yeah. on colors and finding the right subtle leaks. Because we can't we can't deco a toy product the same way they can a studio. Model. Sure, sure. So we work to, to find the right things that bring the same tone and, and flavor of that decoration to mm. this, knowing still that like, oh, well, we're gonna add a lot of sculpted detail on here because that's gonna be something if somebody wants to go in and repaint this right. later and modify it, that's a lot of detail to capture washes and do all that sort of stuff. And we use that in areas. I mean, we put washes in specific spots. This the engines have these washes are great. and stuff. Yeah. But we know there's always fans wanting to modify and update stuff. I mean, yeah. It's, so, it's room for play at all ages at all and ages. all skill sets. Even stuff like, I mean, we make it so that even it, it comes apart, 
So it can't just ship in a giant box like this. Like mm. That's not the most efficient way. So this is still early, so some parts of this aren't final in their configuration of how they come apart. But as an example, oh. the, uh, the oh. engine modules come off so that the basically the core of the ship is is the core. So that'll most likely come as one big piece, but then the engines are will be wow. a separate piece. I'm in looking, here, I'm looking see, out there, yeah. You see the yellow in there? Yeah. That in the final version is gonna be transparent yellow. So that somebody gets a bug in them to put lights or something in it, there's all that sort uh, who, of who would do such a thing, Chris? Who would do such know. a thing? <laughs> I don't know anybody that does that. Um, but that sort of thing. So all those details, the ability to access it, to get things apart, I mean, so. Oh, I'm nervous every time I, I find it. I know. I'm like holding my breath. It's our one and only right here. So. Well, it's a baby for you guys because you've been working on it for it must be a long project. These are years in development and to unveil it for the fans here at Comic Con yeah. and get the reception you guys had at the panel. Uh, it, well, it's, it's a campaign, right? So yeah, it's Haslab. 8000 Hasbropulse.com right now. Go back it. Yeah, yeah. and are you guys doing tiered? Uh, yeah, so we've got, we've got three tiers. So Hera comes, comes with the ship. She's the pilot. Mm. But then we've got Ezra at eleven thousand, Kanan at fourteen thousand, and then Zeb at seventeen thousand. So those are three tiers. Again, building out that crew. Mm -hmm. I think we are so important to play with the ghost. So yeah, and the fun thing with the tiers with Hera, they're all based off that mural art that we see at the Rebels. end of Rebels. But that's a that's a beautiful bridge piece between animation and live action. Like right it's here in at there. the show, yes. there's the there's full mural right over there, there. Yeah. from live action. Yeah. But what we did is we took that, we wanted to do live action versions of the characters. So like Zeb is based off of the live action Zeb from Mandalorian, but he's wearing the outfit from the mural from animation from season four. So it's it's bridging all that stuff. Hera is the likeness of Hera from live action, but wearing the outfit from Rebel season four. So it's, it's, it's telling that story, like getting the kind of the most emotional versions of the characters out for fans and, in an know, exclusive way. And so. not just to the fit figure ourselves. What's important to us is the accessories. We know our fans really play right. for that. So even for, you know, Kanan, the alt head here and the shield, we want to make sure we got that. The scout trooper helmet that hinges open. Yeah, so this is a brand, um, this is a brand new helmet, scout trooper helmet just for this figure where it hinges open because he wears it so much open in the show. Yeah, the lost hat. Like, we wanted to really build accessories in there along with the characters so you can yeah. really, like, play with them. And you guys did announce the other characters in the series for, for from Rebels? Yeah, as part so, of our panel. Sabine. Yeah. Sabine was. Sabine, as part of live action Ahsoka, was announced today. Um, Pre-order August 10th. Um, and then Chopper, we have the little Chopper head right there on the Phantom 2. <laughs> Very, very cool. You guys have, must have so much fun working on this. Yeah. And yes. It must feel so good to finally unveil to the world. Good luck on that campaign. Thank I'm you. sure it'll be successful based on oh, this we reception. We keep getting updates in real time. Yeah, <laughs> we're over 3,000 backers already oh moments after the campaign it, Less than two it's, hours yeah. after. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, well, good luck on the rest of the campaign. Thank, Thank you, you so much for sharing the story. And can't wait to see these on collector's shelves. Hey guys, Adam Savage from Tested here. If you've ever seen the six inch ruler in inches and centimeters on my forearm and wanted one of your own, but you didn't want it to be permanent, well, today's your lucky day. You can now buy temporary tattoos of my measuring stick, my measuring forearm, uh, at tested-store.com. Comes like this, goes on in about 30 seconds with a little water. The instructions are on the back. It comes off with rubbing alcohol, and hopefully it warms you up to the idea of permanently attaching a measuring device to your body, because I use mine every single day.